Okay, I think we're ready. Um, good afternoon. Um, we have some members from our search committee here. If you'd like to stand up here with us and join us, you're welcome to join us. Um, so I'm Councilmember Lorena Gonzalez. I uh, am pleased to be here. I was one of the members of the police search committee. And I'm gonna kick us off today. So as the city of Seattle enters into a two year sustainment period following the consent decree, the selection of the next chief of police uh, represents a major milestone in advancing the city's commitment to ongoing police reform and to the ongoing delivery of excellent policing services. In 2017, the council passed historic legislation uh, just this week, in fact, uh, a year ago, uh, passed historic legislation to create new powerful civilian and community-led oversight systems that will effectively ensure constitutional policing in the city of Seattle. Uh, and the person serving as chief will be crucial to the effort in making continual and ongoing reforms and cultural changes in our police department, building community trust and making all of us safer along with our other three accountability uh, institutions in the city. Our search committee was focused on finding a chief who is committed to lasting reform, an understanding of police culture and policing, a commitment to procedural justice, and an articulated vision on how accountability and community coexist. Over the last several months, the people gathered here today from the police search committee spent dozens of hours hearing from the community, and we heard that we must continue our progress to deep systemic reforms. We are very proud of the work that we have done together to select the top candidates who will be interviewed by the mayor uh, with a finalist confirmed by the city council in the coming months through my committee. Our search committee included broad representation from the community as well as uh, myself, um, uh, union representatives and members of the Community Police Commission. And I want to especially thank our co-chairs which include uh, Jeffrey Robinson, there he is. <laughs> he, who is the Deputy Legal Director of the ACLU and the Director of the ACLU Trone Center for Justice and Equality. He is a national leader and has uh, worked for three decades on criminal justice, racial justice, and police reform issues. Uh, we uh, also have the pleasure of being led in this work by my former colleague and our former mayor, Tim Burgess. Um, and uh, we also uh, had Colleen Echohawk guiding us very ably through all of the hours of interviews that we had to do uh, last weekend. Uh, she is the executive director of the Chief Seattle Club and serves as a member on the Community Police Commission as well. And lastly, but certainly not least, Sue Rar, a former King County Sheriff who has been leading de-escalation and crisis training as the director of Washington State's Criminal Justice Training Commission. Um, those uh, were our fearless leaders in this effort, um, and we really appreciate all of their leadership as we continue to, um, uh, as we continued through the search process. So I am now gonna turn it over to one of uh, the co-chairs of the Police Search Committee, uh, Colleen Echohawk. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez, and thank you all for being here. Um, before we talk with you all about this critical process, and before Mr. Sims shares with you who our community has identified as three finalists for our next Chief of Police, I want to thank Councilmember Gonzalez for her leadership here today and throughout this process. As a member of the search committee, she has engaged actively and has been an important partner in helping us arrive at this moment. She challenged, where are you, can I that? I and I she challenged. <laughs> Us. She inspired us, and we're just very grateful for your full participation um, in this process. From day one, Mayor Durkin made her principles underlying the search process clear. And those were principles that our entire search committee, and many of them are standing here um, with me, and I'm so grateful to be a part of such an amazing uh, group of people. She made the search process clear, and our search committee um, has been working diligently to follow these principles. The first is that the next chief of police must be committed to continuing to build an accountable, diverse police force focused on meaningful 
and lasting reforms and building trust in the community they serve. Second, everything we did had to be based on the input and leadership from Seattle neighborhoods and communities, including those communities that have the greatest distrust of police and the criminal justice system and who face the bias and institutionalized racism of our current system. This is why we had, as members of our 25-person search committee, a group of people who really reflect Seattle, advocates for our immigrant and refugee neighbors, advocates for criminal justice reform, former and current law enforcement officials and prosecutors, members of our business community, neighborhood and community voices, public safety advocates, and members of the clergy. So I want to close by thanking each and every one of you on behalf of the co-chairs. Every member of the search committee put in so much of their time, input, and commitment to this process. There are too many of you to name, but their work has been invaluable, and we are grateful for it. Our next chief of police will shoulder the incredible responsibility of protecting all Seattle communities and building trust among those who have had the greatest distrust of police and the criminal justice system and who face the biased and institutionalized racism of our current system. I am confident that we are recommending to Mayor Durkin three finalists who are people committed to building trust in the communities they serve. So please welcome my co-chair, Jeffrey. Robinson. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Council Member Gonzalez, and thank you, Colleen. My name is Jeffrey Robinson, and I'm honored to serve in my personal capacity on this committee. I want to echo Colleen's thanks to Council Member Gonzalez and to the rest of our search committee because the work that committee did was tireless. And I also want to spend just a moment to highlight the path that we have walked down to get to this point, because I think it's important to understand that we got to this point where we can recommend three outstanding finalists for Mayor Durkin's consideration and final decision. As you will see, this is a process that was centered around community input and community voices. So on behalf of the search committee, I want to thank each and every resident of Seattle, and there were thousands who care so much about our city that they took the time to participate in this process. When we started this work in December, Mayor Durkin appointed a 25-member committee from our community as the search committee. And then we came together to listen to our community. We created and posted an online community input survey, which more than 2,600 residents took the time to respond to. We held 10 community workshops and four community workshops across the city throughout the month of March. The survey and workshops were open to all Seattle residents and provided opportunities for constituents to share their thoughts about the characteristics and experience necessary for the next police chief. And through this outreach, what did we hear from our community? Several things. We heard that the people of Seattle were looking for a chief of police who understands the importance of community and is committed to developing lasting relationships and trust when engaging with communities of color. We heard that the next police chief should be a courageous leader dedicated to reform, especially in improving relationships with, public, with the public and training officers more rigorously in de-escalation and cultural sensitivity. We also heard that the next chief of police should demonstrate an ability to set high standards within the department, understand the history of policing in the United States, and build confidence with diverse communities and make all Seattle neighborhoods safer. After we received this input from the community, we then collaborated with a national search firm to gather the applications. And at the end of the community input process in late March, the committee worked together to narrow the field of applicants. And we are now close to the time where we can announce the three finalists. And so I want to turn this over to my co-chair, former Mayor Tim Burgess. Good afternoon, and it's good to be back with you again. Uh, I came to this assignment uh, as a 10-year member of the City Council and as a former Seattle police officer and detective. And as you know, for a brief time last year, I sat in the office behind us and served as mayor. And so I have a special appreciation of the importance of the selection 
of the chief of police for our city. Public safety and keeping our families and neighborhoods safe is the highest obligation of city government, and that's why I believe this appointment is the most important that a mayor can make. This is the third police chief selection process that I've been involved in, and I think it is the best in terms of the pool of candidates we had and how much it was informed by the people of Seattle, especially those communities who have had significant long-term conflict and tensions with the police. We were delighted to learn in the process that the number of Seattle residents who participated in our listening uh, opportunities far exceeded the cities of San Francisco, Dallas, and Sacramento in their recent police chief search process and exponentially was greater than the 2014 process here in Seattle. As my colleagues have already explained to you, we listened carefully to hundreds and hundreds of people who shared their opinions with us during the neighborhood listening workshops and through the online survey. The search committee reviewed application materials from 62 candidates. Almost half of our candidates were people of color. Ten were from the state of Washington. The rest were from across the United States, the east, the west, the north, and the south. We then identified 10 candidates to advance in our process and conducted a rigorous online media review of anything that's been published about them or by them. We then invited six candidates to sit with us for two hours of in-depth interviews. We completed that process last weekend. The committee then met and we agreed that we would advance five semi-finalists to the mayor for consideration. Each of these five semifinalists had the professional training, experience, and ability to serve as chief of police in Seattle. I'd now like to introduce uh, former King County Executive Ron Sims, who will discuss the next uh, step in the process. Earlier this week, my wife said to me, uh, what is this police chief thing that's on your calendar? <laughs> I thought you were retired. And I said, I am retired. I'm, I'm not an applicant. The, um, <laughs> to the, there's a committee called the Examination Committee. And it's made up of the mayor's legal counsel, Eon Warner, senior deputy mayor, Michael Fong, deputy mayor, Shafali Ragnathan, Ragnathan um, myself and um, Barry Mellican, who is the mayor's uh, uh, legal advisor, oh, so my public safety advisor. I'm nervous. The, um, I want to thank uh, Tim Burgess for his, uh, Mayor Burgess, uh, for the chance to be here for the, on this big day uh, for the city of Seattle. I'm pleased to share with you the list of finalists that are going to be recommended to Mayor Durkin for consideration. Now, all the candidates that were discussed today are all excellent. The challenge was reducing them to three. And we had a rather candid conversation about skills and abilities, what they had accomplished in their, in their professions, their, their views, and do they have the right fit uh, for Seattle and all the things that we believe need to be accomplished in a vibrant, growing community. And I will list them uh, to you by their last name and then share a bit about them the three finalists are Eddie Frizzell, Inspector, Minneapolis Police Department. Eddie Frizzell is an inspector with, excuse me, is an inspector with the police department, uh, which he has served for over 25 years. Inspector Frizzell also holds the rank of Colonel in the Minnesota Army National Guard, which he served for 28 years, including a deployment in Iraq. Cameron McClay, former chief of police, city of Pittsburgh. Cameron McClay is the former chief of police for the city of Pittsburgh. Prior to his service in the, to Pittsburgh, Chief McClay spent 29 years as the police chief for the city of Madison. Eli Reyes, assistant chief, Austin Police Department. Eli Reyes is an assistant chief with the Austin Police Department, which has served, where he has served for 20 
two years. He also served in the United States Army and performed six years of overseas service. He is a recipient of the Purple Heart, Life Saving Medal, and three Meritorious Service Medals. The committee is very confident that each of the, candidates, the, the, the candidates that I have mentioned can, and their leadership styles will serve us incredibly well. Our only goal, and it was a pretty simple one, as a grandparent, as a person who's lived here for a very long time, I want Seattle to be safe and I want it to be a great place to live. And the candidates that we recommended to the mayor will ensure that. Thank you. Well, I'll be happy to try to answer any questions from representatives of the media. Uh, I'm not certain. Does anybody know where the mayor is? I think the, process, the reason the mayor is not here is this group is recommending this to the mayor. Her process now kicks in, and there will be extensive background checks of these three individuals. There will be site visits to the cities that they have come from most recently. There will be personal interviews between the mayor uh, and these three uh, finalists. How important was it for the search committee to have a, quote, outsider as opposed to an insider? That, that was a question that was discussed and debated a lot, both uh, at the search committee level and among the co-chairs and the evaluators. And I think uh, I can answer where I personally came from on that, uh, which I think is generally consistent with how the others felt, that while the police department has made tremendous progress in reform, there's still a lot of work yet to do, including some of the foundational cultural reform that has yet to take firm root. And we felt that it was best at this point for an outsider to be uh, brought in as the next chief of police. You know, there's certainly going to be some. Go ahead. What are Chief Best's uh, options moving forward from here? Uh, I think Chief Best should answer that, but she could certainly remain as a member of the police department. I think there are certainly some people who are, I know that that surprised me when I heard that list. Um, you had a woman of color, uh, a woman of color, uh, who members of this community have a tremendous amount of respect for. And not only that, the rank and file also happens to like Carmen Best a great deal. So can you guys, we weren't in the meetings you were in, we didn't have the conversations or the interviews that you had. Can you try to help us understand what set those three candidates apart that Carmen Best did not possess, please? Sure. And those attributes that you just defined about Chief Best are all true. Uh, she has had an outstanding career in the police department. And in many ways, um, at least for me, the, the needs of the institution uh, in, in some ways worked against her and where she is at this point in her career. Uh, but again, I would, you know, two of the three finalists are people of color. Um, that, that, was, that was an issue that was talked about, but uh, at the end of the day, I think we focused on uh, who we thought had the leadership capabilities, the systems orientation, uh, and the ability to continue to change the culture of the police department, and we concluded that someone from outside the police department would be best able to do that. What input has the mayor had to this point then, and what's her timeline now moving forward? I think uh, the goal of Mayor Durkin is to be able to name the next chief of police uh, late June, early July. And to, up to now, she hasn't had any involvement? Well, or, she, or certainly, she certainly set up this process. I think it's important to remember the, the mayor of Seattle chooses the chief of police. No one else does that. The mayor makes that selection subject to confirmation by the city council, a process that Councilmember Gonzalez will lead. She then set up to help her a process that we've described today that involved the 25 member citizen committee, that involved the evaluators, that involved the work that the co chairs did with others in the criminal justice system here locally to inform her decision that she will make ultimately. That process continues now with the background checks, the site visits, the interviews that she will have with these finalists. So the process clearly is not over. But at the end of the day, this is a decision that she will make based on the input uh, that she's received so far and the additional things that she will learn over the next uh, several weeks. We have some people in the audience here today who are clearly disappointed that Chief Best is not among the finalists. What, what would you say to them? Well, I think a lot of people will have different opinions on who should be the Chief of Police in Seattle. And again, I think it was 
it was less a, a decision about Carmen Best and more a decision about what the organization, the institution of the police department needs today and going forward. There's, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk and since the beginning of the reform process and anybody th th who thinks they can speak to it about clearly one of the most important things is the community's trust in the police department. I mean, fundamentally, that's what we're trying to rebuild. And it seems counterintuitive to some that bringing in a wholly new person with no ties to the community would be better able to build community trust than someone who has worked here for years, who the community clearly likes. So how can you reconcile those two things, that you want to build trust with the community, yet you're going to bring someone in who's coming who no one knows? Well, I think, let's go back to the selection of Kathy O'Toole as Chief yeah. of Police. In 2014, she was chosen. She came to Seattle uh, from Boston and did a remarkable job as Chief of Police and spent, and spent, she did a good job in Seattle as Chief of Police and spent a lot of time in the community building those relationships. And I'm confident that any of these three individuals will be able to do the same. I, I've talked a lot. Happy to keep talking, but no, I'd like my so. other co-chairs, if they wish, to, to say anything at this point as well. Last question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I got a question. Uh, when will the community be able to meet the three finalists? And uh, second to that would be officers who are currently facing discipline decisions by the chief. <laughs> will that be put on hold until a new chief is uh, selected, or will Carmen Best rule on those? Those cases. I, I'm confident and I assume that Carmen Best will remain as interim chief until the new chief is here. Um, and I can't answer the specifics about any cases that may be pending on discipline. Um, there is a process, as I mentioned, going forward from this point that involves uh, more extensive background checks, that involves site visits to the home cities of these uh, individuals and interviews with people in their community uh, that they dealt with in their capacities there. Uh, and then the interview process with Mayor Durkin. And throughout that process, I'm sure they'll be planning as to, as to when the, the finalist will be introduced uh, to the city. Timeline? Yes. Is there an expected timeline here? I just know that Mayor Durkin wants to make the appointment by the end of June or early in July. Other than that, I don't know a specific timeline. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, we look forward to this process wrapping up soon. Yeah, you guys did a poor job. Thank you for doing a poor job. Anybody but the woman. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do a poor job. Anybody but the black woman. Okay. <laughs> Anybody but the woman. Yeah, Reverend, would you do yeah. a few things for yeah. the media? Yeah. Yeah. Poor job.